Hi, this is Mrs. Sloan, and we're going to talk about photosynthesis. Video one here, I'm going to introduce the big ticket items of photosynthesis. Video two, I'm going to focus on the light dependent reactions. And then video three, I will focus on the light independent reactions. All right. And then some adaptations that there are. That there are. All right. So let's get started. And we need to keep in mind everything we learned from chapter six when we learned about redox reactions and when we learned about how um, electron transport chains work okay so we're going to get to that today all right so chapter seven on photosynthesis first things first so these are plants right we know these as autotrophs right or producers now autotrophs or producers can be very very small right or they can be very very large um, we are known as heterotrophs, right? Because we have to consume um, preformed organic material. Now, the process of photosynthesis, myself smaller here. Okay, so look at this Minecraft version of photosynthesis, all right? So take it in from the top. So you, you need an input of energy. This is an overall endergonic reaction. So the sun's gonna provide the light. Okay, then when you look at the other reactants that you need, the two big things that you need are CO2 and you need water. So how are you gonna get the CO2? The CO2 is gonna come through these little openings in the leaves. And so then the chloroplasts have access to CO2. Where's the water gonna come from? The water is gonna come from the roots and via the TATC theory or transpiration, adhesion, tension, cohesion, we're gonna get that water up to the top into those plant cells so that they can do photosynthesis. Now byproducts of photosynthesis are um, oxygen, which can just be released out here. You can see that through the same openings that let the CO2 in. Um, you're also going to form glucose, sugar. So you, the plants may use that sugar for their own needs because they are doing cellular respiration or they may store it. Maybe they store it down in their roots. So let's see what else is in this picture that maybe we didn't identify, all right? So you can see loss of water, that would be via transpiration, water evaporating out the open stomata. You can see sugars getting stored down here in the roots. You can see water and nutrients moving up. Things that you need like nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium, um, key components and fertilizers are gonna come in through the roots. Notice that the roots also need oxygen. The roots are not doing photosynthesis but what are they doing? Cellular respiration, right? So they're going to need oxygen for cellular respiration. So on the basics, the very first block, um, and if you are new to my class, um, the notes are down in the descriptor of the video. Column one is what you fill in, and I have little highlighted places that you want to fill in. And then column two, you should add in pictures like this picture um, to help you understand the process. All right, so basics. Photosynthesis converts solar energy solar energy into chemical energy, right? Like sugar, the energy of carbohydrates, and it can be used for either structure of the plant or fuel. Autotrophs produce their own food. And then you wanna add on to that, they produce their own food because they convert the inorganic to organic, convert the inorganic CO2 into the organic sugars. Heterotrophs, like I showed you just a minute ago, uh, here is your heterotroph. Heterotrophs are consumers. They take in preformed organic molecules, take in preformed organic molecules, like plants, they eat plants or they eat fungi or they eat animals who have eaten plants as building blocks and as a source of energy. Oxygen, which is a byproduct besides sugar, oxygen is a byproduct of photosynthesis, um, allows for aerobic respiration to take place, not only in animals like us, but it allows aerobic respiration to take place in plants as well. So your reactants that you have, here's a super simple diagram, right? You have reactants and you have products over here. Your reactants are solar energy, water, and CO2. So solar energy, water, and CO2. Water is up through the roots, if you remember, up through the roots. And CO2 is in through the stomatal openings of the leaves. And both will then diffuse into the chloroplast. So we can identify what gets oxidized and what gets reduced. We actually already did this in chapter six. So this is just a very simplified version that's reminding you that CO2 is going to be reduced into carbohydrates 
and water is going to be oxidized just to oxygen, all right? Okay, that part's pretty easy. Let's take it a little bit higher now. Um, let's look at the um, structure of a plant, right? So this is a cross section of a leaf, cross section of the leaf. Um, you've got some little hairs up there on top. You've got some palisade mesophyll running along the top here. And you've got other mesophyll right here in the middle of the leaf. You see all those little green discs in there, right? The little green discs are going to be chloroplasts. And they've taken one of those green discs and blown it up right here. Here's the chloroplast. And then here's an actual photograph, photograph of a chloroplast, right? Now, remember chloroplasts have a double membrane. Remember the origin of where we think chloroplasts came from in the development and the evolution of the eukaryotic cell. Chloroplasts were probably free living photosynthetic bacteria that got engulfed by a larger bacterium right, and became its chloroplast. Other evidence that we have for that is that chloroplasts have their own DNA. It's a single circular chromosome like what you would find in bacteria. Um, they are self-replicating, they have their own ribosomes, they do their own protein synthesis. Okay, now let's take a little closer look inside a chloroplast, which is inside a cell, which is inside a plant, right? Plant, plant cells, within the plant cells, the chloroplast. So now we're going to the interior of that chloroplast. We can see the double membrane. Then can you see these green pancakes that are all stacked up? These are hollow green pancakes. Do you remember, I'm cutting to the chase right here. Do you remember in chapter six when I talked about electron transport chains and na 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 and how they work, use the energy by passing electrons from a high energy electrons as it gets passed through the chain, you capture that energy to concentrate hydrogen ions on one side of a membrane. Yes, creating a chemiosmotic gradient, a difference in concentration, hydrogen ions, right? A difference in charge, hydrogen ions, positive charge, and a difference in pH. A lot of hydrogen ions is a low pH, okay? That place where you're concentrating all those hydrogen ions are inside those green hollow pancakes, okay? So when you look inside here, this is where you're concentrating those hydrogen ions. Where is the energy coming from ultimately to concentrate those hydrogen ions? The big yellow thing up in the sky, the sun, is providing the energy ultimately to concentrate those hydrogen ions. Where are those hydrogen ions coming from? Well, what was one of your reactants for photosynthesis? You had CO2 and water. Water is going to be a source of those hydrogen ions H2O, oh, oh, let's release the oxygen. That's a product of photosynthesis, right? So you will use those hydrogen ions. We will concentrate them inside the center of these thylakoid membranes. And guess what? Do they want to stay inside the membrane? No, they don't. They want to go back out. And when they go back out, you will make ATP. All right. So now I know where the oxygen comes from. Now I've got some ATP. There's a couple other things we need. That energy transfer molecule, NADP, we're gonna be making some of that as well. And out in the spaces around these pancakes is where the cooking happens. This is where you make the sugar, is out here in the stroma. So I know that was a lot, but I wanted to paint a big overview of what's going to happen in these reactions. So on your chloroplast anatomy, you have, it's a double membrane. The stroma is this fluid surrounding the pancakes, the semi-fluid interior. This is where CO2 is fixed into sugar. And we're gonna learn that process. And then the thylakoid membranes are these membranes of these pancakes, right? Okay, these thylakoid membranes. And um, they, whoa, why would you want all these folds on all these membranes? What does that increase? Mm -hmm -hmm. Yes, surface area, right? Surface area. So for increased surface area, and ATP and reduced NADP is going to be generated on these membranes, and I'll teach you about that. Um, it forms interconnected spaces where hydrogen ions can be concentrated, so they'll be concentrated inside our hollow pancakes. There are pigments embedded in those membranes. Do you know what pigments are for? Pigments are to capture light energy. You know names of pigments like chlorophyll, right? There's chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, there's actually more than that, but those pigments help capture the light energy and help you transfer that, right, over to NADP, um, and you can also make ATP, right? So pigments are embedded in the membranes, and then you have grana and granum. All of these pancake stacks are grana. A single stack is a granum. 
Okay, that's good, right? We got that part done. Now, um, let's talk about the overall reaction. You have seen this before, right? So be prepared in class. I'm gonna have you draw on this slide and you identify what gets reduced and what gets oxidized, right? And you're gonna tell me that this energy right here comes from the sun. The CO2 is going to get what into glucose? It's going to get reduced into glucose. If you don't know what I'm talking about right now, you should go back and watch my chapter six video, part three, about redox reactions that will set you up for photosyn photosynthesis. My chapter six, AP bio, part three, okay? So CO2 gets reduced into glucose. Um, this water is gonna be oxidized into oxygen. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let me go back here, all right? So these hydrogens right here, look, six molecules of water. Each water has two hydrogens. What's two times six? Oh, I know, 12. Okay, here's CO2 with no hydrogens, and now meh, it has 12. Okay, how did they get there? Well, they got given temporarily to our mule, who is our mule, NADP, who's going to carry them for the short term and eventually give it to CO2 to reduce it into this glucose. Okay, look right here, 6O, right? So we have six oxygens right here. We have some, look right here, six times two, that's 12, right? 12 oxygens here and six here, right? We have six here and now we have 12 here, same. So our oxygens are balanced on both sides as well. Okay, so on your notes, the overall reaction, you have this entire reaction already in your notes. Now the next part is the role of NADP. And I mentioned this earlier, NADP is the transfer molecule to take the electrons from water and ultimately give it to CO2. So the role of NADP, and then when you reduce it, it's NADPH or NADPH2. Water is the one who ultimately provides the electrons. Water is the one that ultimately provides the electrons to reduce CO2 into glucose. However, um, the electrons or energy are given to NADP, First, in the light-dependent reaction, the light-dependent reactions occur on those green pancakes, those thylakoid membranes, and then passed ultimately to CO2 in the light-independent reactions, and the light-independent reactions occur in the stroma around those green pancakes, all right? Perfect. So then um, the two reactions, um, light dependent and light independent. So now this is an oversimplification, of course. All right, but here you can see the thylakoid. This green right here represents the thylakoid membranes of those green pancake stacks, okay? They're not showing you the interior versus exterior. They're just saying the light reactions are occurring across those membranes. And then right here, you're seeing the Calvin cycle. Another name for the Calvin cycle is the light independent reaction. Back when I went to school, they called it the dark reaction. And the reason why is because it doesn't require light, but when they would call it dark reaction, it sounded like it required it to be dark and it doesn't. So any dark reaction, Calvin cycle, light independent reaction, these are the names that you might be familiar with. So let's take a look, this is great, right? Here comes water. Water is gonna be, you're gonna take water and you're gonna break it in half. And when you break water in half, you're gonna get oxygen and you're gonna get some electrons from the hydrogen, okay? And you're going to use those electrons, you're gonna excite them by the sun, okay? And you're gonna ultimately transfer those electrons to NADP. You're gonna give them to NADP and they're gonna become reduced NADP. Okay, the other thing is you're gonna be doing a couple of reactions. There's photosystem one and photosystem two, and you will also be generating ATP. So ATP is made from the light reaction and so is reduced NADP. When we go here to the Calvin cycle or the light independent reaction, this is when you actually fix the CO2 into glucose. And in order to do that, you're gonna need CO2, right? But you're also gonna need energy, that's ATP. You're gonna need these electrons and the hydrogens associated with them to make the sugar, right, C6H12O6. When you're done, you will have taken the hydrogens away from the NADP, now it's done and it can be reused again in the light reaction. You will have spent your ATP and now it's ADP. So on your two reactions, um, you have light dependent reaction, water is split, 
okay? Water is split. Um, NADPH, ATP, and oxygen are products, okay? Look, what, look at the list right here. Reduced NADP, ATP, and oxygen are products of the light reaction. Um, the Calvin cycle, the light independent reaction or the dark reaction, you will use ATP, using ATP, and reduced NADP from the light dependent reaction to reduce CO2 into glucose, to reduce CO2 into glucose. All right, so that's it for part one. And then I'm gonna do part two, which is the steps of the light reaction. That's it.